face decisions What's wrong or what's right I open your word And I find the light It leads me to safety Shows me the way I couldn't make it Without it one day Welcome to I Believe. I'm so glad you are with me today. There are 183 of us in this ministry family, partners in this ministry. I appreciate you so much. Share this on your page. It's going to bless somebody. Somebody needs this word. So on the last program, I actually ran out of time before I was through with this message, and I want to finish it. I want to continue. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Before we go there, let me tell you when I first became acquainted with this scripture. I was 12 years old. My mother's on the set. She's back there. I was 12 years old, and uh, I ran. I was in my, uh, when I was seven years old, a Pentecostal pastor adopted me, and my name became Jeff Ferguson. I grew up next door to the church. My mom, my birth mother, uh, I grew up next door to the church. Our family did in the parsonage. And so I was acquainted with church. I was acquainted with, we were Pentecostal. I was acquainted with spirit-filled things going on, but uh, I had a powerful family, wonderful mom and dad, great, great, great church in Flint, Michigan on Leland Street, 947 Leland Street was our, was our uh, church address. Our address was 943 Leland Street, and I remember being so afraid as a kid. I was afraid of the dark. I was afraid of somebody breaking in. I was afraid of the devil. I was tormented with fear. I actually had a big stuttering pro uh, problem. And when I was 12, I was lying in bed and I heard a lion roar over my head. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it happened. I don't know if it was my imagination or if it really, but it felt like real. And I was so frightened and I remember hearing in church the scripture that Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And when I heard that, I thought the devil is in my room. And I prayed for the first time that I ever remember praying. And I said, Jesus, please help me. It was midnight. And I was so afraid. And he spoke to me. He said, for the first time that I ever remember him speaking to me. And he said, have your dad pray that you receive the whole armor of God. That's the scripture we're going to, that's the foundation of this teaching today. And when he said that to me, I was too afraid. And I did not move for three hours when the, when my clock flipped over, remember the flip over numbers? Flipped over to 3 a.m., I prayed again, Jesus, please help me. And he spoke to me again, have your dad pray that you receive the whole armor of God. I ran into my mom and dad's room. Mom, do you remember this? Do you remember this day? You do? I knelt down on dad's side of the bed. My mom was on the other side that was like built up on a landing. And I said, dad, would you pray that I receive the whole armor of God? And he laid his big hand on my head, 3 a.m., I woke him up, and he said, Lord, give little Jeff your whole armor. And I felt the Holy Spirit pour over my little body. And, and the fear that had gripped me my whole life went out the bottom of my feet and out of my fingertips. And I felt the Holy Spirit fill me. And out of my belly were these rivers of weeping. I didn't weep. I was a little boy. I didn't weep. Out of my belly, these rivers of weeping and these syllables that I did not learn as a, as a child. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in an unknown tongue, baptized in the Holy Spirit, endued with dunamis power. It changed my life forever. I went back and I sat up in my bed and I spoke in tongues and cried for the next 30 minutes, a transformed, spirit-filled, 12-year-old believer. 
I recorded my first album that next year at 13 years old and started traveling everywhere, ministering. And mom, I think a, a couple years after that, I was in groups. A couple, we got my own sound equipment. I had my own van. And I toured around and ministered and sang. And, uh, but it all began to happen when I was wrapped in power, when the Spirit of God filled my life. I had heard the Word of God the Bible, Sunday school stories, preached all of my life, taught all of my life. But something significant, a transformation happened when the Holy Spirit infused and animated the Word of God in my life. It changed everything. You know what I'm talking about. You can, uh, you can hear someone give you scriptures all day long and it doesn't have any power. The word of God, you know, it's great, but if it doesn't have the power of the Holy Spirit, let me read you with that in mind. Stand for there, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which, you, which will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S. So praying in the Holy Ghost is part of your armor, by the way. Everyone always stops at the sentence before, but that's included in your full armor. But let's read that right there. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I looked at the word sword. I mentioned it in this last program, but I need to mention it again. It's a large knife used for killing animals and cutting up flesh. Okay, the sword of the Spirit, Numa, the Holy Spirit, the life-giving Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Word is rhema. It's the sound of the voice of God. It is the experience, the revelatory experience of the Word of God. Not just the spoken word that we hear about or we read about, but the experience of the Spirit-infused Word bringing revelation to our life. It is the sound produced by a voice and having a definite meaning. meaning the letter killeth, but the Spirit brings life. The letter is from the Greek word gamma, and it means a letter, a writing, a document, a record, or learning. We get our word grammar from gramma, okay? Uh, the letter killeth, all right? Remember, it's a sword. The sword part kills. To kill, to destroy, to allow to perish, to deprive spiritual life, to procure eternal misery in hell. The letter does that, okay? The teaching, the document, the writing, the learning kills. In other words, you're divorced. You can never minister again. You are unfit to minister. And they've got a letter to back them up. One of Paul's letter. He's the one who wrote this. Paul also wrote this, okay? The letter killeth. But the spirit, pneuma, brings life. This word life in the Greek means to produce babies. It means to produce living young, to procreate. It's spiritual power to arouse and invigorate. It means to restore life, to give increase of life, to give increase to physical life. You're going to live longer. You're going to be alive. It means seeds quickened into life, germinating, springing up, growing. So if you have the word, the devil, Satan used the word against Jesus. If you have the word outside of the spirit infusing it, you only have part of the recipe that fulfills the armor of God in your life. But you must, if you really want the sword of the spirit, you've got to have the letter and you've got to have the spirit together. You've heard the scriptures thrown at you that carry no life. You're yawning. You want to go to sleep. But when it's a Holy Ghost word, spirit-infused scripture, it changes your 
life forever. Let me tell you what you need. You need to go from lukewarm to hot. You need to go from a knowledge, a learning of God, and a learning of the Bible, to being filled with the Holy Ghost, to being a born-again believer, spirit-infused, walking in divine power. That's what you need. So the, there's a doorway to that kind of life, and his name is Jesus. So right now where you are, it's time to get on fire for God, to give your life for God. The only thing that will defeat the deception in your life is the fire of the Holy Ghost infused with the Word of God. So right where you are, say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again. You are alive. I give you my life for the rest of my life. Forgive me and fill my body with your Holy Spirit. Take me from lukewarm to on fire. I need you in my life. Once you experience the Spirit-filled life, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Spirit animating the Word of God, it will pull you in to the scenes of the Scripture and change your life forever. God wants to use you. He wants to use you by His Spirit. He wants to lead you and guide you by His Spirit. Thank you for all of our ministry partners. Thank you for those who join us at jeffferguson.com. Thank you for everybody who gives. I love you. I appreciate you. Share this with somebody. Share it on your page. Somebody needs it. God bless you. If you just made a commitment to Christ or renewed your commitment to Christ and you're a new believer, we have a phenomenal resource for you at no charge. Just go to jeffferguson.com, J-E-F-F-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N.com, and then click the new believer button. And we want to help you with some information for your new journey with the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you joined us today on I Believe. If you want to become a part of our ministry family, just go to jefferguson.com, J-E-F-F-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N.com and fill out the information form there so we can be partners together in ministry. God bless you. We appreciate you so much. I believe, yes I 